Hey guys, it's Brandon. Today we're going to talk about carburetor heat and carburetor icing. It's a very simple concept, but it's extremely hard to understand. I was in that same position when I was working through my private pilot uh, training. I uh, just didn't really understand carburetor icing. I didn't really understand carburetor heat, when I was supposed to use it, when was the potential to get carburetor icing, how would I know I got carburetor icing. So I'm going to make this little short video to help you understand and make you more knowledgeable and just a better pilot because of this, okay? So first off, what is carburetor icing, okay? Well, first off, you're going to have your carburetor. You guys check this out. All right. Well, there's a big hole in your carburetor, and there's this little flapper thing in here, okay? It's called butterfly valve. Whenever you increase your throttle, it opens that valve up more. See that? So full power, you're going to have a full opening in the carburetor, just like that, okay? At low idle, it's going to squeeze off, okay? All right, so how do we get ice to form inside the carburetor? Well, first off, you have to have moisture, which there's always moisture in the air, okay? Now, just because there's moisture in there doesn't mean it's going to freeze up a carburetor. Why would that freeze up a carburetor, okay? So inside our carburetor, it looks like this. You have a little venturi right there, okay? So what happens is, as air... Uh, goes through the carburetor, it hits this venturi, it's a, it's a little restriction, so it wants to accelerate, or it has to accelerate that air whenever it goes through the inside of the carburetor. So, whenever you accelerate air, what does it do to the air temperature? Well, it always drops your air temperature, okay? So, sometimes our carburetors will have a little port that's about right there. See that little screw? You can take that screw out and you can put a temperature probe in there. So what that does is that'll give you an indication of what the air temperature is going through the carburetor, okay? Uh, one Cessna 182 that I flew a couple years ago, we took off, the outside air temperature was 77 degrees. The carburetor temperature was right at, uh, I think it was 42 degrees. So it's a big swing, okay? So when do we have to worry about carburetor icing. Well, the main thing is whenever the temperature is below 70 degrees. When the temperature is below 70 degrees, when that air goes through that venturi, it can drop the temperature enough to where it'll be at the point of freezing going through this restriction through the carburetor. If there's any moisture, which there'll always be some moisture, but if there's a lot of moisture, then that will begin to ice up the carburetor. So how do we know that there might be uh, ice in our carburetor? Well, like I showed you, there is this butterfly, butterfly valve, okay? So, as you can see, there's a big opening. And as I squeeze this butterfly valve shut, it decreases our opening. Well, let's just imagine if we're flying full power with that opening and the carburetor starts to develop ice. What happens is it starts to pretty much just clog up your carburetor that airflow can't flow through the carburetor and so since it won't flow through the carburetor that well we have a decrease of engine performance okay so that's number one uh, indication when you have carburetor ice so let's say that I'm cruising at 2300 rpms and after a little bit I look and our power is dropped down to 2100 rpms I increase a little bit more power it opens up that butterfly valve a little bit more Power goes back to 2300 RPMs, so everything's fine. A couple moments later, I realize the power is back down to 2100 RPMs, and I go full power, and I'm only getting 2100 RPMs. So, what's going on is that ice is uh, restricting the carburetor. If I think that's happening, then what I'm going to do is apply my carburetor heat, and that's going to send hot air through the carburetor, and that'll melt off. Uh, the ice, the ice is going to turn into water, it's going to go up into the engine, the engine is going to run really rough uh, for a couple moments, and after that it's going to uh, clean out. You're not going to have that restriction anymore, and then you'll gain all that power back, and you'll be good to go. If you don't understand this, what could happen is you might have carburetor icing, you'll end up putting an aircraft down in a field, probably damaging the aircraft, and all you had to do was just pull the carburetor heat and it would solve the problem and you would never get yourself into that situation. So very important to understand carburetor icing and carburetor heat, okay? Um, so you don't, if well, if anything happens, 
you'll be able to solve the issue and keep flying and everything's perfectly safe and normal, okay? So where do we get our carburetor heat from? We get it from this. We get it from an exhaust shroud. So uh, the way this works is our exhaust coming out of your cylinders goes into this port, this port, and this port. This is just a muffler and then it dampens the sound going out the exhaust pipe, out the tailpipe. So it's not near as loud. So what we do is we have these little tubes. We circulate good clean air and cold air through here. It's going to um, wrap around the hot exhaust. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap in here. And you stick your finger all the way down in it and stuff. It circulates the air through or around your exhaust and then it's gonna come out this hole and we can funnel that into our carburetor heat box, okay? So, let's say that the temperature is 30 degrees. I pull the carburetor heat. It can warm the temperature up to 90 degrees. So that's gonna be plenty of hot air and it'll melt off our ice, everything's cool. So, we have our carburetor heat box. So like I said, the carburetor will sit on top of this box. This is where your air filter comes through or the air comes through your air filter and that goes up through the carburetor and into the engine okay the whole thing of the job of the carburetor is just to mix your air and your fuel together okay well what we can do is we can there's a little valve in here and what we can do is as I pull it you'll see it deflect let me see that okay so what I can do is I can have it shut like this to where good clean filtered air is coming up and it's going through the carburetor or I can pull this lever back and then it shuts off your good clean air and sends your hot air up through your carburetor and uh, will solve your icing problem. Okay, uh, Very simple concept. Like I said, it's, uh, it's hard to read out of a book and understand this. Okay, so. Um, that's if you have carburetor ice. Personally, I've got over 4,000 hours. I've never had carburetor ice personally because I use the carburetor heat as a preventative measure. I don't want to wait until I have carburetor ice and have the engine trying to die on me while I'm in the traffic pattern or on a final approach. So what I do is I use the carburetor heat as a preventative measure to keep that from happening. So how do I do that? Anytime Rule of thumb is anytime that the temperature is below 70 degrees and um, you have visible moisture or a lot of moisture in the air, but my rule of thumb is the temperature is below 70 degrees and I'm below the green arc on the, R temp or the RPM gauge, I will pull, pull the carburetor heat and just let it run hot air through the carburetor. And that's just going to prevent you from ever developing carburetor ice. The only bad thing about that is the carburetor heat um, that's going into the carburetor isn't filtered. Is that a bad thing? Not really because you're in the air so there's less dirt in the air than say you're taxiing around on the ground and there's a lot of loose debris, you know, grass and whatnot kind of uh, coming up but in the air is, is you know just fine so anyway uh, just to kind of uh, go back over everything where we have to worry about is this Venturi. The air speeds up going through it. When the air speeds up, then you have to drop in air temperature. When you have a drop in air temperature and you have moisture in the air, you run the risk of um, developing carburetor ice and blocking this whole mess up inside the carburetor, kind of clogging it up. How do we solve it? Well, we have the hot air circulating through or around, excuse me, around our exhaust, and we can funnel that into the carburetor heat box and we can direct that up through the carburetor and melt that ice off and we can use it also as a preventative measure so that never really happens. Another thing for you guys to think about is what if the temperature is below 20 degrees? What happens typically is if your temperature is below 20 degrees then the moisture in the air is probably already going to be in a frozen state. So if you apply carburetor heat at that point what that does is it warms the air back up and then when the air goes back through the venturi, it'll refreeze, but then you're, you're stuck because you've already applied carburetor heat, you've refrozen the air, you've got carburetor ice, there's not much you can do at that point. 
Um, anyway, so I hope this video helps better explain carburetor heat and carburetor icing when you need to use carburetor heat um, and what's some indication that you might have carburetor icing. So hope you guys uh, like the video. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Appreciate it.